Let's say you haven't been doing very much email marketing lately. Well, you might need to warm up your email address before you just start sending 10, 20, 30,000 emails. In fact, doing that out of nowhere can tank your deliverability even if all of those emails are completely legitimate. It's gonna just throw up a red flag to the email service providers and be like, whoa, we've never seen this address before. Let's hold up because this looks like it could be spam. It went from zero to a 100 uh, email sending rate in no time. So let's let's slow things down a lot. Dave Swift here from clientamp.com. I am the world's foremost expert in reviewing software that you've never heard of and you are watching That LTD Life the series where I review the best and often the worst LTDs you might be able to find on the internet. The whole goal of this series is to help you figure out what are the best steals and deals that you can invest your capital into to grow your online business. Today, we're looking at a tool for email marketers. Perhaps you're doing some cold email outreach or you've just got a new domain or IP that you'd like to send your emails from. Well, you need to warm that up. And for this, we're gonna be testing out Inboxy over on AppSumo see how it does if it's actually a useful tool. 59 bucks is the lowest price you can pay. That's a one-time cost. You get to use the tool forever. If we look at the plans and details here, you can see that basically all of the plans are gonna be the same. It just depends on how many inboxes you want to warm up at the same time. So we are always getting 120 emails per day. And then if you need more than one inbox, you can just choose a higher tier. It goes all the way up to tier five which is 20 managed inboxes. Now, the important part here is that you can swap out these inboxes so that if you want to maybe do this as a service for clients, you could do three or five at a time and then just swap it out after those IP addresses, those email addresses are warmed up. So let's go ahead and check out how this thing works. I've literally never used it. I'm about to buy my code right now. I'm gonna get the tier one because I wanna test it out before I make a big commitment. So let's go ahead and proceed to the checkout and we'll see how this thing works. All right, I've got my accounts here. I'm gonna hit activate and let's go ahead and proceed over to their website where I'll need to set up my account. A little loading animation here. All right, we got a nice customized welcome sumo links. All right, my account has been created. It took me to a page called accounts and I assume I could add additional accounts here if I wanted to. I'm gonna go into what's called the main account. Looks like there's a pencil. You could probably relabel that. Yep, sure enough, I could. So this is nice if you want to set up an account for maybe multiple businesses you can use that same login, that same email and password that you set up in your initial setup here. All right, so I can go ahead and connect my inbox. So I'll choose this button right here. And it looks like we've got a variety of options to choose from. We can do Google, Microsoft, Mailgun, GoDaddy, Inbox Road. I've never actually heard of this one before. SendGrid or Custom SMTP. Let's see if there's more options here as well. All right, so the other option was another Google option. Let's break this down. So we've got up here, Google personal Gmail. So just like a regular Gmail account. Then we've got Google Workspace using OAuth for your authentication. And then we've got personal Gmail slash Workspace, uh, which is basically, I think that's probably gonna be browser-based authentication. So probably entering in your password um, directly into the browser. A little bit of a different way to, to authenticate an application. I believe this method is going away even just like in a few months. So probably want to authenticate with one of these two options here. For my purposes here today, I'm gonna to use custom SMTP, just a regular old mail server. If you're doing cold outreach, this is probably a method that you'll consider at least at some point if you don't want to pay for a dedicated Google Workspace account for sending your cold outreach. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my email here. All right, I've got a brand new email address that I just created for the purpose of creating this video and I'm gonna go ahead and connect it up to my account here. All right, so it's connecting. I'm just using the standard SMTP protocol with a username and a password. Hopefully this goes smoothly. It says, uh, wait while we connect to your email provider. And it looks like it's checked inbound and that is working. However, outbound is not. I might have a port configuration wrong here. So let me troubleshoot. All right, I'm just gonna try a different outbound port connect. This is just configuration stuff on my end. If you're connecting up through Google or whatever, you just click a button and I'm sure it'll authorize. All right, looks like we are logged in here. So it says instant setup or detailed setup. So the instant setup is no configuration needed, but we can fine tune it later, or we can do a detailed setup and then fine tune the behavior as per your need. So let's try that out because we wanna see all of the settings that are available. So let's see, number one here is hours. Then we've got goals and rules. So reply to email. Well, I'm not sure what to enter here. It'd be nice to have a little bit of instruction in terms of what is actually going to happen. 
essentially I can set up my sending time zone and then the hours that the emails will be sent. That makes sense. You want to look like a human being, not just sending all through the day. Uh, and then we've got the days of the week we want to send on. Okay, Monday through Friday. I like that. But reply to email, I don't know why I would have a different reply to email than the one I'm sending from. Uh, typically, if you're, I guess, if you're sending from an email and you're doing cold email, you might want people to reply to your actual inbox. But I think that right there is probably not a wise idea. So I would just leave this as you're sending uh, just because you're going to signal too many uh, kind of spammy things. Uh, so I'd leave that as the is the sending email. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed to the next step. All right. In this step, we're going to set up our goals for the entire warm up process. So you can see here, we're going to start at between 20 and 90 daily emails. And then every day we'll increase that by 20%. And it says when the initial warm up completes, send an email to, and then you can enter in your real email address here that you might have been using for quite some time. After the initial warm up phase, you have an optional extended warm up phase, which you can toggle on or off. You could do that for the initial phase as well. And here we're going to target a specific IPS score, which is what they call an inbox placement score. So we want to get at least 90, which will put us in their excellent range. And then we can have it send us an email when that is done as well. And then finally, we've got what's called a maintenance phase, which essentially just keeps your inbox right in that excellent range. So if you take a break from sending, it will pick up some slack for you and make sure that you're still delivering emails that are getting open. So that's actually a really cool feature here. That's not something I've seen in other tools. So I like that. I'm going to leave all of these on and we'll go to the next screen. All right. Our rules are the final step here and we can define our unspam rate. Let's see what that means. It says by default, inboxy seed emails will take 100% of your emails from the spam folder into the primary inbox. Okay. That sounds good. So let's discuss what that actually means. I believe they're indicating that if your emails are currently hitting spam, the emails that you are sending, they will automatically move those over into the primary or main inbox, thus giving the ISPs or the ESPs, excuse me, the email service providers, hints that your emails are desired and should be placed in the inbox. Now, why would you want this less than 100%? Maybe because it would look more authentic if it was anything other than just absolutely perfect. So you could bring this down a little bit, although this setting seems grayed out, so I think I have to leave it at 100. Next, there's an option here to define a reply rate. So the idea is some of the emails you send are going to get responses, right? If you're a regular human being, you're writing to other people, people should be writing back. And if they're not, that is also a signal to the email service providers that the email was probably not desired or was not from a real human. So if we have, let's say, 50% of our emails receiving actual responses, that's going to be an indicator that yes, these are desirable emails. Yes, these are, you know, real human communications. This one, however, we can slide around a little bit. So you can position this however you like. I will leave it at the default 50%. All right, just a few more settings here. We've got an open rate. Once again, this seems stuck at 100%. I can't change it. But the idea would be that how many emails do you send that actually get opened? I know that I open all of the emails I receive from people I suspect are actual human beings, people that I already know. So having a high open rate is another good indicator to the email service providers that, yep, you're a real person. Now, how many of those emails get starred? So this is obviously like a Gmail thing. You can click a star and then it's saved as an important email. Well, 30% might be a little bit high in my opinion. You can bring this down to whatever you like. Well, I'm no slouch when it comes to email deliverability, but I don't claim to know as much as a company that's built software on specifically IP warm up, inbox warm up. So they are recommending here that you set this at 40 to 80% during the warm up phase and higher during the post warm up phase uh, when you're diluting your emails with actual cold emails. So the idea there would be uh, that as you're sending out cold emails, you're also sending some to these kind of automated systems that are actually opening the emails and, and starring them. So it'd be higher to balance things out. All right, so we'll pump this up a little bit. Why don't we do 50% and engage. It's working! It's working! Okay, it says inbox setup. Your inbox is currently being set up. Please wait and I will do so. All right, so I'm inside of my main account and you can see the inboxes that I have connected. If I had an account that allowed me to connect more than one inbox, I would click this plus button up here to connect another account. There's also some settings. 
I can basically just see, you know, what's going on here. I'm not sure it's a first name, last name, email address. These are all squished together. So that looks pretty funny. Last engagement was 1969 and it was created on July 18th. So this whole section, a little bit befuddling to be truthful, but uh, I imagine that will probably be fixed in a future little CSS tweak. The default view for our inboxes is this grid view, but there's also a list mode if you prefer that. I'm gonna go back to the grid view for now. And then let's go ahead and just click into our inbox here and we can see what's going on. So we've got a nice little hot air balloon, balloon over here. It looks very romantic. Most email marketers, highly romantic people. I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, we can see what's actually going on with our warming up. We've got a queue over here. 20 emails are queued up. None have been sent, none have been opened, none have been unspammed. So move from the spam folder into the inbox. Uh, no replies, no stars. And we can see our IPS score here for Microsoft as well as Google. All right, this is a pretty nice dashboard. I like the layout. Don't care for the colors as much. Uh, you know, that could be tweaked a little bit, look a little bit more sleek. But uh, it just in terms of color contrast, they're not the most readable, right? Maybe just make it a little bit easier to glance at. But other than that, the data they're providing is excellent. That's exactly what I want to see. Everything that was just configured, tell me how that's doing. That's a really great way to approach anything that's got analytics attached to it. If I set it up, tell me how it's doing. Now, if I need to pause this, I can do so right over here. There is a little toggle switch and then I can just turn off my sending altogether. I've got yeah, these settings over here, which I'm hoping pops me back into my configuration that I saw earlier. Yep, the exact same screen. And then we've got the triple dots over here, which allows us to reconnect our inbox if something happens. We can view our proxy or just remove the inbox altogether. All right, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take for these initial emails to send. It looks like this is not updating live. So why don't I refresh the dashboard here and see if anything is sent? No, it has not sent yet. So if you're wondering what in the heck is actually going on here, emails are being written and then sent from my email address. I've connected up my email server and then it's going to go to some of the inboxy managed email accounts that are going to be located on different ISPs. That's going to boost my deliverability over time if I'm consistently sending and receiving emails to other email service providers, they're going to say, oh, looks like this is actually a legitimate domain. This is a legitimate uh, email address that's sending. Let's allow those people to hit the inbox of our other patrons as well. Is this dishonest? Well, not really. It's really just getting you to where you need to be to be able to reach people. You should still follow all spam laws. You shouldn't use this service to then just blast spam to everybody that you can possibly scrape their email address from. Always send emails to people that want to receive your emails. But let's say you haven't been doing very much email marketing lately. Well, you might need to warm up your email address before you just start sending 10, 20, 30,000 emails. In fact, doing that out of nowhere can tank your deliverability even if all of those emails are completely legitimate. It's gonna just throw up a red flag to the email service providers and be like, whoa, we've never seen this address before. Let's hold up because this looks like it could be spam. It went from zero to a 100 uh, email sending rate in no time. So let's, let's slow things down a lot. The emails themselves are actually written with ChatGPT. So it says here inside of the plans. In fact, I'm gonna go to the billing section here and you're gonna see this is all of the same AppSumo details. Um, so they're written with ChatGPT 3.5. That doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is it looks like a real message uh, if, in terms of what the email service providers are. Oh, there's content here. Okay, great. They're not necessarily, unless it's Google, you know, they're probably not going through and then indexing everything you say so that they can sell ads to you later. But we know Google does that. That's what Gmail is all about, right? Right? There's one more feature here. It's this little coffee cup in the upper right-hand corner. It says holidays. And here you can add in specific holidays. So let's say I wanted to add in, I don't know, how about Christmas? And that's a day that maybe you don't want to be sending any emails. So you could add that in. Let's do 2024. And that's a recurring date every single year. Oh, I should have checked that uh, prior to typing this. Now I have to do it again. So I'll do on every December 25th and then hit create. Okay, so my holiday has been created. And although it's not really spelled out very clearly for me, my assumption would be that, okay, on a holiday, emails will not be sent just to, you know, seem a little bit more legitimate. Although, you know, often holidays aren't the biggest time for sending emails because sales run around those times. All right. So my emails are still pending to send. You can see they're in the queue on my screen, 
But this is gonna be a tool that's gonna be difficult to give kind of a final score to because I'd need to use it for weeks or even months in order to really see how well it does over time. On the surface, I like the thoughtfulness through all of the features. Everything is laid out in a pretty intuitive way, in my opinion. The design, I didn't really care for the color palette. It kind of looks like fall, like I should be getting ready for trick or treating. Um, not really my look when I'm you know, wanting to stare at a screen. I think what's interesting is that the icon for their logo and the typography up here looks nice and sleek, but then the interface itself does kind of feel like I should be getting a pumpkin spice latte. But everything else, like the functionality, the main part, the stuff that matters, uh, it seems like it's well thought out. I'm excited to see how this does actually. I could consider using this both for myself as well as for, for client accounts that maybe have some trouble hitting the inbox. So here's what I'm gonna do. We've got the Taco Truck Roundup coming up on Tuesday of next week. I usually record that over the weekend. So I'm gonna let this run for a few days and then I'll be able to give it kind of a final conclusion inside of that video. That'll just allow me to get a little bit more data. I'll actually see if the emails get sent, what my IPS is and all of that good stuff. And then I can tell you whether or not I'd recommend it, whether I'm gonna be using it personally or not. So that's gonna do it for this video. My name is Dave Swift. If you want help with your website, head over to clientamp.com. That is my company. I work there along with my team. We can help grow your online business to what you dream it could be. So definitely hit me up over there. I've got a link for this product that you've been watching in Boxy in the description. That helps me out to create videos like this. It's a lot of effort that goes into producing these almost daily at this point. So really appreciate it. Anyone who can take the time, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought, good or bad. I'd love to hear it. My name is Dave Swift. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next review.